Good morning, brothers and sisters. Last week, I shared to you about being great in the Lord. I pray that all of us would desire this kind of greatness that is directed, determined, and desired by the Lord. Today, we want to look along the same line on the topic, Serving Purposefully. I'll be looking at uh, several passages today. Shall we commit this time to the Lord in prayer? Dear Lord, we pray for your Spirit to open up our hearts and open up our ears that we may understand your Word and we may apply your Word. We pray for your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to guide us so that we may learn how to serve purposefully and giving glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, how do you feel about serving God? I remember while I was in university, there was a speaker who shared about this topic and he asked us this question. Is your serving a drag, a duty, or a delight? This question actually made me think a lot whether my serving is being accepted by God or not. Is our serving today a drag? I remember when I first entered into full-time service, I was very much overwhelmed by the load that I got to do in church. Not only I had to serve in various ministry, I was also studying in a seminary full-time. And it was too overwhelmed for me. And I became so tired and almost to the extent of burning out. I felt sick every week. And I really dragged my feet to go to church. One day I was in the seminary or studying. One of the lecturers said this. He said, many of us know the Bible of our God but we do not know the God of our Bible. This sentence struck me. I felt that I was that person. I was in a seminary studying about the Bible to learn more about the Bible. But I realized that I do not know God. This really struck me so much that I'm while I was doing so many things for God, but yet I feel so alienated from God. I feel so far from Him. And it is that instance that the Lord spoke to me and helped me to come back to Him so that my serving to Him, I would feel that it is a delight for me. And God would also take delight in me as well. So I hope that our serving will not be a drag. It would also not be a duty. Some of us may just see serving as a duty. Because you no one do the job, so we have to, we got to, and we are being assigned to. So we day in, day out, Sunday by Sunday, we are just fulfilling our duty. I hope that we will move on from this, that you will not be a drag or a duty, but to move to be a delight. Many of us fear serving. Some will say that we are inadequate. We do not have the skills, we do not have the knowledge. How can I serve? But God said that He looks at our heart. If you have the heart, then you will not fear that you are inadequate. God will equip you some of us have misplaced priority. 
we see that other things are more important than God, than church. Sometimes we think that God is like the person who fight for time. And we think that if we want to serve God, God would expect us like to throw away our career or our family. No, that's not true. God wants us to be a good testimony at our workplace. God wants us to be a good steward to serve our family. And God also wants us to serve Him in the church as a spiritual family. So God is not there to take away all these things from us. In fact, He's the one who helps us to manage all these things properly so that in all areas we can serve God right so no matter whether it's our work our family or in church we can serve God anywhere some of us have an unclear purpose so that's why we mentioned about the greatest treasure if our greatest treasure is to succeed in the world, yeah, then we will place a lot of emphasis on working out our career. So serving would not be so important or sometimes it doesn't even have a place in your heart. So we need to have a clear purpose of what God has placed in our life and how much God actually means to us in our heart. Some of us are fearful of commitments. We are afraid to give God too much. As I mentioned earlier, God actually wants us to have a balance. And commitment is something that is good. It's just that we need to commit to our work. We need to commit to our family. We need to commit to our spouse. We need to commit to the responsibility that we are assigned to. So commitment is not something fearful. We are always learning to commit because to be commit is to be faithful. So by coming to church, we are learning to be faithful to God. To commit ourselves is learning to love the people of God, to love the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and Christ Himself. So let us not be fearful of commitment. And some of us are fearful of conflict. As we come together, as different ideas merge together, there are bound to be conflict. When there are people, there are problems. But that's how the Lord wants us to grow. As iron sharpens iron, so we sharpen one another. Right? When iron sharpens iron, there will be spark, there will be heat. So not to worry, we are sharpening one another. As long as we have the right attitude, we can overcome conflicts. Conflict is the way to grow. It need not be a problem. So instead of fearing to serve, let us fear God instead. My brothers and sisters, fear God is more important than the fear of serving. When we fear God, the fear of serving will fade away. I say that again, when we fear God, the fear of serving would fade away. So what's crucial in serving? Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. A similar, similar verse can be found in Psalms 40, verse 6 and Psalm 51, verse 16. 
It says here, But Samuel declared, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, obedience is better than sacrifice, and attentiveness is better than the fat of rams. Here, King Saul was asked by Samuel to destroy everything that belongs to the Amalekites because they have sinned against the Lord. However, King Saul did not kill everything. In fact, he uh, left some of the choices for himself. So in fact, he was uh, planning to parade them and if, to, to build a monument for himself. Pride has grown in him. And this grieved the Lord. When Samuel confronted him, he was still giving excuses. He told Samuel that he was planning to bring all this, including the king, King Agag, to sacrifice all this to the Lord when Samuel arrived. He did not acknowledge that it was due to his disobedience. Even he did not acknowledge that he was due to his pride that he's doing all these things. So that's why God says that he did not delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Why is obedience so important? Every time we hear the word obey the Lord, sometimes it gives us the impression like the Lord is like using His power, forcing us to obey Him, to follow Him. He's, he wants total control of our life, just like a master controlling a robot. But let us think again, why is the Lord so concern over the word obedience is god like the master controlling a robot that he's dictating controlling his people to do whatever he says the word obedience that is something more important and that is the relationship between God and his people it speaks about the love the people have for God and that is why obedience is so important so when God talks about obedience it's not like a master controlling a robot he's talking about a relationship between God and his people because when God's people is able to relate to God they will follow God. They will obey God because they know God's purpose. They know what is good and what is bad. So when the people of God disobey, that signals a broken relationship with God. They are disowning God. They are choosing to do their own ways. So here, it is not about doing things for God, but relating to God. Right? So in our serving, relating to God is more important than doing things for God. If we are not relating to God, 
then our serving in the church become meaningless. We don't even know who we are doing all these things for. Right? So we must always get back to the relationship with God. Here's another verse in Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. I don't want your sacrifices. I want your love. I don't want your offerings. I want you to know me. This verse is even clearer. Hosea was asked to marry a prostitute to show the kind of relationship God has with the Israelites. While God was so faithful to the Israelite, the Israelite has prostituted herself to idols. They have a broken relationship with God. Even though they were still making sacrifices, even though they were still have these offerings to God. That's why God says, I don't know, I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your offerings. But what God wants is this, I want your love. I want you to know me. You see, the relationship we have with God is so important. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. After we receive God's mercy, after we know that Christ has died for us, here Paul exhorts us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. We do not need all those animals sacrificed any longer. There's no point bringing all these animal sacrifices to God year by year. What God wants is a living sacrifice because the ultimate sacrifice has been made by our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is important right now for us is to live a holy and pleasing life to God. We are to live a life that is acceptable to God. It is a living sacrifice. So here you can see serving is not just restricted to Sunday service. It's not, not, it's not just about coming to church doing some things for God. It is a lifestyle because we are a living sacrifice. It is our daily life. How we live that out for God. Here it says, this is your true and proper worship. Or some version says that it is a reasonable act of service. Our service is a form of worship. My dear brothers and sisters, How we live our life every day is a form of worship to God. So brothers and sisters, let us learn to relate to God because that is the most crucial thing in serving. Right? Serving must arise from our relationship with God then it becomes meaningful, refreshing, and fruitful. Without the relationship with God, our serving becomes meaningless. It's not effective. It is in fact draining. We, if our daily life is not a worship to God, it's not an act of service. So what if we do a lot of things on Sunday? So here the Lord calls us for a consistent relationship with God. Walking closely 
with the Lord every day. What are some of the misconceptions of serving God? Firstly, mere output. That results in spiritual dryness. Some people see serving God as mere output, meaning that they just do and do and they are the one who make a lot of sacrifice. In the long run, they will feel that they are very dry. We commonly hear this. We heard, we hear people saying, yeah, I'm the only one doing this. Nobody understands how much I have have served God. Right? They think that they have given so much to God. One of the things or the most important thing that I learned in my six years in Thailand is this, that the input that God put into me is more than the output that I have for God. You know, after serving for so many years, we realize that what we can do for God is really very, very little compared to what God have done for us. And even when we are serving, God is always teaching us new things. God is always transforming our lives. So, if we miss out this part, then there's a broken relationship with God. Then your serving will be mere outputs. It's just like you're going to some charitable organization and, you know, doing a lot of things for them. There is no God in the picture. So you will end up spiritual dryness. Some to some, uh, serving God becomes a mere skills and talents. So when we come to serve God, especially nowadays when uh, church are short of manpower, many people are being put up too quickly. As long as they have certain skills, certain talents, wow, it just match so nicely. right? So they are being placed in this area of service without checking on their spiritual maturity. And even after placement, there is no one to guide them, to help them to grow spiritually. So end up, Different area of service become an area to show forth their skills and talents. End up, it become a performance. And many a times, it can result in pride. So that's a very dangerous thing. Of course, the church needs skills and talents. However, we need to continue to guide these people. In fact, it is better for them to have certain maturity before serving, especially in the front line, like worship leader, for example. Or else we may cause the leader to fall in the later part of their life. Their serving may not be long because they do not understand the concept of serving. Some treat serving as mere efficiency. Right? How fast you do things, you get things all done. Uh, it's just like being a good manager and you know to coordinate all the things. It's the pastor become the CEO, getting everything run smoothly and nicely. Well, of course, it is good. Right to have all these processes. It would definitely help the church. However, again, as I say, we m- must not treat efficiency as a God in church. It is just a tool. And we must always allow space for people who are slower. Certain people may not be so good at it but they have the heart to serve. Then, the church should give opportunity for these people to try. 
to groom them, to train them, to equip them. Even though they are slower, we can allow them to grow. The church is a place where we also allow people to make mistakes. We may do things in the wrong manner, but that's where guidance comes in and people are being coached to guide them to do things in the right and proper manner. Sometimes uh, serving God is reduced to mere power play. People fight for positions in church, fight for name, fight for status in church. Who have the bigger say? Right? That results in politics. Church is a place of showing love. It's not a place to show power. So if we have all these wrong concepts, it will affect us how the church function and how the church grow. And many a times it will create a lot of disunity in the church. So what are, the some, what are some of the purposes of serving God? Firstly, to draw close to God. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, it says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that leads to death, so that we may serve the living God? Praise God. Today we have the blood of Christ, not like the blood of the animals that needs to be sacrificed year by year. We have the blood of Christ that is pure and holy, that can totally cleanse our sins that leads to death. But what you see, what's the purpose when God made this plan to sacrifice His only Son? Right? We see the veil being torn. In the book of Hebrew, it says, a new way, a new and living way has been opened up for us. The purpose is for us to approach the throne of grace with confidence. The sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ is for the purpose of drawing us close to God. So serving God help us to draw close to our God. When you are close to the King, then you know what the King's what the King likes. Right? When you are there to wait upon Him, to serve Him, you will understand more about the heartbeat of the King. So, serving enables us to draw close to God. Secondly, to mold us into His image. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19 says, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. For the sake of the Galatians, Paul was in pain of childbirth. Why? Because, because he was laboring for them. He was helping them, guiding them to grow. As what I mentioned just now, many times when people are placed into different areas of service, there's nobody to guide them, to coach them spiritually. But when you do something wrong, yeah, people will scold you and jump at you. And people if there were any guidance, they will guide you only in the area where you are doing. For example, if you are accounting, people guide you to help you to do accounting. If you are singing, people there will be people who guide you to sing properly. If you are computer techno, they will guide you how, how to flash your slides properly. But very often, we miss out the spiritual food. The purpose of all this serving is to 
transform us into Christ's likeness. Christ must be formed in us. So when the person is singing, we got to see if this person is becoming more and more like Christ. If this person is doing accounting, is this person becoming more and more like Jesus? How are we helping one another to have Christ form in us? We must not reduce serving just to become doing things for the church. It must transform us and also to help us grow in character. The Lord wants us to grow to be more and more like Him. And one of the things, of course, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bears fruit in our life. And we see all the different godly characters in us. But here, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, it says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love, making make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. When we serve together, right, as in Ephesians, we are talking about uh, the unity of the church. Paul tells them that to live a life worthy of the calling. And in verse 2, it says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Here, when we, we see the people coming together, like in a church, when every one of us, every one of us comes together, ah, when all the different values, where the different perspectives comes in, different ideas, different methods comes in, how do we work together? Are we going to fight with one another, argue with one another? Sometimes when we see the news, and especially in the Taiwan parliament, you know, wow, anything they, they disagree, they do not know how to discuss. They will end up fighting with one another. The church should not be like this. Serving enables us to learn to grow in our character so that we know how to work together, how to keep the unity together. Because we have the Holy Spirit in us. So we must never forget that serving would help us to bind to us together so that we can serve together and to grow in our godly character. Serving also helps us to use our gifts and talents. Talents are what we have received even before we know Christ. But after we know Christ, we receive even more grace from God. And that is what we call spiritual gifts. So we have many gifts and talents that the Lord has bestowed upon us. So as much as we are using them to serve in our workplace at home, let us also not forget the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. It's for the common good. The Lord wants to bless the community, not just the church as well. So we are to use our gifts and talents. And you can be that testimony in the workplace, in our home. Not just confined to the church. We can serve God using our talents and gifts 
wherever we are. The next function or the next purpose is to function as a body. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, it says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So you can see here, the Bible exhorts us, don't overestimate ourselves. Don't see ourselves too high up. So much so that you think that you're more important than others. And then others are low class. Because here it says, God has given different amount of faith to different one of us. And every one of us have different function. We are different members of one body. So in order for that body, which is the body of Christ, to work, all the members are important. And all the members need to function together. So it is not one man show. All of you are important in the eyes of the Lord. Because though many we form one body, and each member belong to all the others. We need to serve one another. We need to care for one another. So that the body of Christ can work together. The other purpose is to be involved in his mission. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, it says, all, all this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. You see, one another purpose, right, is to bring this message of reconciliation to the world. So, not only us have come to know Christ, but the Lord also want others to come to know Jesus Himself. So, we are the vessels that God has chosen to bring this message to others. So be it be our family members, to our neighbours, to our colleagues or even to the people out there. God wants us to be involved in His mission. The next purpose is to give praise to God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, it says, If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serve, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised to Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So he says here, if anyone serve, yeah, don't serve with your own strength, you know. We have to serve with the strength that God provides. So if you think that you are lacking, you are inadequate, serve with the strength that God provides. But the purpose is what? He says here, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. The purpose is to give praise to our Almighty God. Our serving will result in praise. So we are not claiming this glory for ourselves. It is not a performance on our part. It is to give God the praise and glory that is due to His name. So brothers and sisters, as we look through all these purposes, 
I hope that you will give you a better picture. So we ask ourselves, how's our serving today? What is our view towards serving? Is it a drag or a duty or a delight? I hope that all of us will move towards delight. And what are the fears we have? Today is also the time that we evaluate ourselves. As I say, it is better to fear God than to have all other fears. Let us commit our fears to God. And how can we serve and grow better in the Lord? As we understand what is crucial, the crux of serving God, that is the, our relationship with God. And as we look at the various purposes that God has for us through serving Him, I hope that we can grow and serve God better. Let us arise and seize this privilege that God has given for every one of us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving us this privilege to serve you. We know at the crux of serving God is that you want us to know you, to love you, to relate to you. Lord, help us not to treat serving God as though it is doing things for you. Lord, you do not see all this serving, all this doing, all these things as important as relating to you. So Lord, we pray that today we will put things in right perspective. As we serve you, Lord, we know that you are using this opportunity for us to commune with you, to relate to you, to love you. So Lord, bless my brothers and sisters who are listening to this message this day. That they will use this opportunity that they have in this life to serve you and to worship you with all their hearts. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.